We are totally unaware that our food supply, medications, and sometimes even the air we breathe are filled with these fungal poisons fully capable of causing symptoms and diseases in humans. Stay tuned and let the learning begin. Hi there, my name's Dr. Greg Emerson. I'm a physician from Brisbane, Australia. I first met Doug a few years ago and my life's never been the same again. It's an honor and a pleasure to be on his show and welcome to Know the Cause. We have a show for you today. Thank you, Dr. Greg Emerson, all the way from Brisbane, Australia. By the way, he's gonna be back within the content of today's show, talking about being responsible not only for your health, but for your food that provides your health. He's got a farm, amazing guy. Also, Susie is gonna be here today. Eczema, you ever hear of eczema? Doctors often prescribe antihistamines, but Susie says, what if it's the histamine in your food that is causing the eczema? My good friend Kyle Drew joins us today. Hey, Doug. We're gonna have some fun. I know. We're gonna open today's show at a restaurant. <laughs> what is it about restaurants that makes it so difficult for us to go in and say, phase one. We're going to show you how to do that. And then these books. Oh, people always ask, what are the favorite books that we have that contributed to the fungal knowledge? We'll tell you what they are in just a bit. All that and a whole lot more on today's Know the Cause. So here's the biggest question we've ever had, or the most questions we've ever had, center around, okay, Doug, the phase one diet is great, I eat it, I feel good, but then a friend calls and invites me out to dinner, just like Kyle did to me today. Yeah. <laughs> so here we are at a restaurant, how do you stay on this diet that makes you feel so good and you've lost the weight and their ears aren't ringing anymore and the skin is clearing up? How do you stay on it and eat out? Right? Yeah, and once you learn what the phase one diet is all about, you can take a little list with you. You can adapt that to virtually any restaurant you go to. And we decided to order a breakfast, a lunch, and a dinner today just to give you an idea of what that would look like. So here comes, I see him walking up here with the meal. Now this is almost diametric to what a restaurant has. Right. Okay, we okay, got I have poached eggs and turkey bacon instead yeah, of regular yeah, bacon. Yeah. I have a chicken oh, food yeah. with no bun. It still has peppers and the onions and a side salad there. It's perfect. Uh, what can I get you for dressing on that? I didn't, I didn't get that. You know, you like something like a lemon oil. Do you have just some olive oil to go with it? Lemon juice? Sure, I'd be happy lemon to grab that. Be perfect. Right yeah, now normally you see what this comes with is some pancakes or is an English muffin. Yeah. Or the question always gets raised even when he came up, do you want whole wheat? or you know, white, <laughs> white, bread. white bread, yeah. <laughs> so you don't on the phase one diet. And so often when you're going out, it's a treat, yeah. right? You're going out anyway, why not throw caution to the wind a little bit? You know why? When I get home, I don't feel so good. That's the key. If I have an English muffin or something, I just don't feel that good. So stick with this kind of eating. Yours came with what? Yeah, so you have the onions, a little asparagus, maybe some green beans, it's chicken that's grilled, and then at this place, you can throw in things like your own onions, maybe some jalapenos, different pico de gallo, something to dress it up a little bit so that it's not just plain and boring. You know what's interesting is this little salad after he gets done with, okay, perfect. Okay, I'm sorry to say, but we only have Italian dressing. It's the closest thing I can get to oil, but I definitely have lemon. We'll do the lemon salad. Okay, I'm sorry perfect. about that. No problem. Do, you do, people want ask this? For, do people ask for just plain olive oil when they come? Oh, well, not really. Normally, yeah. you know, we get ranch dressing <laughs> right. or yeah. Italian or something like that. Very, um, very common. Sure, I can get you maybe some salsa or something to go on top of it. Mm -hmm. I think I'm good for now. This okay. perfect. Well, do people ask for a dry salad? Uh, I mean, it's happened from time to time, but it's not regular, I would say. What's the most common salad dressing that sells here? Definitely ranch dressing. Uh, ranch we dressing. make uh, yeah. house house-made ranch dressing, and everybody seems to love it, so. Yeah. When the kids were little, yeah. ranch dressing over everything. It's an I mean, American they tradition. They toys in <laughs> ranch dressing, right? Well, <laughs> they eat those. I mean, it's amazing. So this is, uh, we're on a special diet. Um, okay, what diet, diet is that? Kind of excludes grain, sugars, corn. Okay, so uh, like gluten-free? Yeah, thank you, that's good. Everybody <laughs> asks me that. A gluten-free diet, many of you are on this diet. A gluten-free diet, remember, first and foremost, is a wheat-free diet. 
So skip the middleman, the gluten, the gliadin, and go directly to the wheat. So it's a wheat-free, grain-free diet. Most people don't know that corn is even a grain. Most people don't know sugar is a grain. Yep. So it's very common when you order coffee in the morning. Coffee may not be that offensive, but then you put cream in it, and then you load it with sugar. Sugar. Of some kind. So and sugar everything is a grain, else. Huh? I didn't know that. Yeah, sugar is a grain, one of those terrible grains, and corn is, this is a different kind of a diet. So this is perfect, and this is the way that we would eat if we were to go out, even for lunch. Sometimes we'll add the turkey bacon plus the poached eggs. And one of the things to keep in mind, when you go to these restaurants that do the breakfast, sometimes yeah. they mix a little pancake batter to make <laughs> scrambled eggs. What you want instead is to get the poached or the hard-boiled eggs, and that'll be a little bit better for you. This is perfect okay, so for I the dinner. Okay, so I have beef with no mushrooms and no sauce. It normally has a red wine reduction <laughs> okay. sauce and some broccoli, a little bit of onions, and then you have just your burger without the patties, onions as well. Perfect. Um, I guess just eat up. We have plenty of dessert. Well, actually probably <laughs> We're sitting right by the dessert. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Perfect. That's what they put us here for a reason. Yeah. This is really good. This option is rare. I mean, you can get broccoli, but it always has cheese all over it melted. You get beef tips, but it has mushroom sauce or cream sauce of some kind. And anybody can have a hamburger with onions on it. So what's wrong with mushrooms, if you don't mind me asking? So mushrooms are a yeast or a fungus, and we encourage people I not to so. eat fungus. Makes sense. Uh, yeast, etc. So this is kind of the way you can have breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And I like what Kyle said. This can be breakfast, lunch, or dinner. That does look good. It does, say that. doesn't it? Without mm -hmm. all the stuff on it. It's just okay. the way we try and eat. Well, you guys enjoy yourselves. If you need anything, let me know. My name is Trevor. Okay. Thank Thanks you very much. much. You guys hungry? Join us. Because <laughs> it's only me and Kyle sitting here. Kyle, this is the wave of the future. All the accoutrements, all the sauces, all the other things uh, may be slowing a lot of people down when you consider the oils. Yep. The, did you know margarine has corn? I didn't you know? know this. I mean, it's fascinating, all the sugars and some of these things. This is the way I believe to feel good. And I think that almost any restaurant and any style of food can be adapted to the phase one diet. Once you learn the diet, order accordingly. As Guy Evans says, and now you know. Most of us clean out our closets and attic more often than our gut. But by not cleansing, you don't know what you're missing. Like 10 pounds, maybe? Let me tell you about ImmuCleanse, a unique cleanse, detox, and antifungal product in one bottle. NSC ImmuCleanse contains 26 potent natural ingredients plus glucan to flush out those toxins that are robbing you of energy and blocking proper nutrient delivery. ImmuCleanse has liver, gallbladder, and stomach aids too to help you nutritionally resolve constipation, gas, bloating, and flatulence. Intestinal worms and fungi meet their match. When you rid your body of that three to 12 pounds of gunk on your gut walls, you even lose weight around the middle. Do it now to cherish that clean gut and renewed energy. Yours with NSC ImmuCleanse. A chemical called one octan three all and two doctors. That's my take. That's what this is all about, okay? A doctor friend of mine wrote me and he said, did you see this in Research Daily recently that mushroom vapors can actually contribute to the very symptoms of Parkinson's, albeit in fruit flies, but if you translate it over to humans, I mean, we're not crushing mushrooms and inhaling them, but mold in our basement or mold in our environment can create these vapors that contribute to neurotoxicity, right? And we know mycotoxins are neurotoxic. The first physician comes in because he wrote this to me. Fungal growth, he wrote this in a newsletter. Fungal growth in your home may have the power to shut down the genes responsible for re releasing dopamine. Can't believe that uh, drug companies aren't circling that. And that in turn could lead to one of the most devastating diseases known to man, Parkinson's. And he said a new study was on fruit flies when they were exposed to mushroom alcohol vapors released by mold. They showed the movement problems associated with Parkinson's. Now, he says that doesn't translate to humans, but imagine this mold getting in your brain. And he says, but mold, mildew, and fungus can hurt you in so many other ways than just contributing to symptoms of Parkinson's. In fact, I found that fungal infections are a major source of illness, especially chronic illnesses. Don't we all have those? And it's one your doctor almost certainly never looks for. And he's a doctor. 
Then I wrote to another doctor friend of mine and said, I've never heard of this one octane three all that mushroom vapors make. Is it a mycotoxin? And so this doctor wrote me back and he said, Doug, absolutely. One octane three all could be considered mycotoxin since it's a toxin produced by mold and some plants. And he goes on to give me its boiling point and so forth. Uh, folks, here's the take home message. We are being exposed to mold, maybe in our basement, uh, maybe in our schoolroom, you know, maybe by swallowing antibiotics, which are fungus, which are mold. The take home message is the more we study this, that show, what's it called? Know the Cause, was absolutely right about this 15, 20 years ago. The take home message here is be careful of mold exposure. But then again, it's just my take. That's My Take is brought to you by NSC Immunition Products. Let your better tomorrow begin today with Immunition Products. Every human contains more bacterial cells than human cells. It's essential that your friendly bacteria outnumber the not-so-friendly ones. I'm Dr. Fred Pescatori, and I recommend Dr. O'Hara's probiotics. Because of its unique formulation, it supports a balanced immune response, stable energy levels, and weight management. I believe Dr. O'Hara's probiotics is the most powerful and effective probiotic available today. Remember, it takes guts to stay healthy. I'm Dr. Fred Pescatori. Which of my books fits you? Can you cook your way to wellness? Can you eat your way to wellness? That's the name of a couple of books I've written, Cooking Your Way to Good Health or Eating Your Way to Good Health, loaded with recipes, whether you want to follow the phase one diet or the phase two diet. Please your families with good tasting foods, all put together in these two great recipe books. If you have knee pain, back pain, muscle pain, or any kind of pain, Flexin is here to help. But you don't have to take my word for it, Here's what this Flexin user has to say. Well, I recommend Flexin because it has worked so well for my wife and I, and we are able to continue our work uh, pain-free as a result of taking this product faithfully. You've seen Flexin on Know the Cause with Doug Kaufman. Now's your chance to take advantage of this great offer. It's buy one, get one free, but you have to call right now. Call 1-800-N-PAIN. Wow, seems like the show's almost over, but it's only half over. That restaurant was amazing. When you know, when you have memorized the phase one diet, it makes ordering easy, okay? Susie's gonna talk about eczema and the importance of histamine in foods. Then Dr. Greg Emerson's gonna be talking about his ranch food, but let's go to Susie right now. Hi, I'm Susie Cohen, America's pharmacist. If you've ever had eczema, you know the only thing that matters is getting rid of the itch as fast as possible. Dry, itchy, scaly skin is for the birds, literally. And I've got some ideas that can help you banish eczema fast and hopefully forever. With eczema, it's helpful if you can figure out the trigger for your flare-ups. I can help you do that. The flare-up, by the way, isn't just on top of your skin where you can see it. The flare-up happens because your body's immune system goes haywire. A common cause of eczema is histamine. You're probably thinking of pollen, aren't you? But histamine occurs in foods that you're eating, and this could be the cause for your eczema. Also, touching certain metals like your rings or your watch or your eyeglasses, that can flare you up too. There's tests that you can take to test your reaction to certain metals. To figure out all these things and learn about simple, affordable supplements, get a copy of my new book called Eczema, Itching for a Cure. It's available at my website, and if you don't already know this about me, I just love to think outside the pill. Well, just a couple of guys sitting here with our feet up, a couple of old buddies. Um, Greg Emerson is here with us right now, folks. He's all, the, is that comfortable? That hurts my legs, actually, holding my no, legs up there down. like that. The boots are spectacular. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Emerson is all the way from Houston, Australia. No, it's Brisbane, Australia. <laughs> Houston. When did you get those? I bought, I've just arrived. I thought this is my fifth year on Know the Cause. Yeah. And I thought I'm kind of an honorary Texan now because I'm <laughs> six foot seven. I know everything's bigger in Texas. <laughs> so I thought I fit in quite well here. So I thought I'd better start looking a bit like a Texan. <laughs> and as you know, now I've got my own farm. So I need my boots and we get a lot of sun. So I, I thought I'd get the steps in as well. I'm feeling Dr. Very Emerson, that's what I want to talk to the folks about because I understand when you were here a few years ago, you had a home. Then it went to a home on a couple acres. And now you've got 50 acres. You're raising cows and chickens and goats and everything. Uh, 
why do you do that? Here's a guy as a physician that could go work in a hospital, bring in a couple hundred grand a year, smile all the way to the bank, but you've chosen a totally, you and Emma have chosen a totally different lifestyle. Tell us about this lifestyle and the choice. Well, we live in uh, 50 acres of rainforest, uh, which comes with its own problems with mold and moisture, of course, but that's another story. But we did it for a couple of reasons. One, we wanted to take responsibility for our own food, and our, basically our backyard now is a sea of purple and green vegetables, which is just fantastic. Um, and, and then we have our own uh, animals and bees and make our own honey. So we wanted to take responsibility for our own food. Um, but the other reason that we did it was... You know, I was reading an article the other day, and it talked about, I might take my sticks off now. <laughs> it talked about uh, how over the last few thousand years, we've gone from eating roots and shoots for medicine to having potions. Then we went to herbs. Then we went to drugs. And now we say the drugs aren't working anymore, and we're going back to the, the roots and shoots. Yep. And I think that's very important. That's, that's one of the things I wanted to do. And I was talking to you the other day about um, watching Cat Stevens singing Peace Train. Yep. And uh, I thought, what an amazing generation who decided to, to protest against the conflicts in the world using music and, and song. And I'm thinking, where is the protest now? And I realised the protest is in with people who are doing what we're doing, which is saying... I don't think I can fight this system, but what I can do is I can opt out and I can go back to not do things in the old way, but look at some of the old principles about growing our own food and um, taking responsibility for that. And, and we're, we're nearly off the grid now. We have a, a solar system for our electricity and we, uh, we pump up our water from the spring-fed creek for our water. And, and it's a big movement, particularly strong in New Zealand. It's starting to get stronger in Australia and I know it's happening in America. And we wanted to be part of that as, as a protest. Like, we don't want to fight the wars anymore, and we want to take responsibility for the world, and we want to protest, but we want to do it peacefully. Um, and we thought the best way of, of doing it peacefully protest was to, to, to opt out and start taking responsibility for our own health. And, and you and I both know that the hospital's not going to be there for us when we get sick because it's, it's overwhelmed and too much. And, and you and I think, OK, well, let's not get sick. And how are we not going to get sick? Well, we're going to take responsibility for our own health and be our own health insurance. And you know what, Greg? There's so many people <clears throat> that email me, should I immunize my child? People email me and shake their fingers. Doug, talk on TV about genetically modified organisms. Talk about how we're slowly being poisoned with our water and fluoride and chlorine and how amalgam is hurt. And what you're saying is... Emma and I have known that for a long, long time. We chose to kind of opt out. Um, is it your opinion that sometimes antibiotics are necessary? But also there are natural antibiotics that if you get the bugs early, they can also gobble them up. So as a physician, I mean, you probably prescribe antibiotics for patients. Sometimes they're necessary, but not in the overabundance of which we're prescribing them now. Is that correct? Sometimes you need modern medicine, and even vaccination. I always say to people who ask me about vaccination, I think if I'm going to Africa and there's an outbreak of Ebola virus and I yep. have to go there, which is almost universally fatal and highly contagious, am I going to take my risks with the Ebola virus vaccine? Of course I am, because it's a risk-benefit ratio, and it's the same thing with antibiotics, the same thing with surgery. Yeah. If my appendix is about to burst into a mountain of pus in my <laughs> abdomen, it's not time for wheatgrass shots. <laughs> you know, it's, I'm going to need surgery, but the difference will be after the surgery, I'm going to say, okay, what was I doing wrong? What do I need to change so that doesn't become a recurrent problem so I don't get filled up with diverticulitis yep. and then need half my colon removed? And then you have guys like me who say, could the wheatgrass shots uh, years ago have prevented all of this? Okay, now, Dr. Emerson, you're going to see him on the show more and more. Dr. Emerson's Ranch, real honey, pomegranate, real pomegranates. They grow fruits and vegetables. And we'll have him on all the way from Australia just to teach us a little bit about living out on the land and how to prep the land and how to eat off the land. Thank you for coming in, both you and Emma. Good to see you. Good to see you. Don't go away, friends. I'll be right back with more. By just simply looking at how our bodies respond to trauma, our bodies heal themselves. And if our bodies are not healing themselves and if they're getting worse, that's an indication that something's wrong, something's off, and we need to get to the root cause of it. Which of my books fit you? The first time I wrote this book, I called it What Makes Bread Rise. Many people didn't get it. The same yeast that makes bread rise can make us rise. 
So is there a fungal link to weight problems in America? Read the fungus link to weight loss. The diets are there, the prescriptive, the natural antifungals. I think you'll enjoy it, and I think it'll cost you a lot of pounds. Hi, I'm Carlos Escalante, and I'm here to talk about Paractin by Herbal Ultra, a patented extract with published human clinical studies for rheumatoid arthritis. Used for generations in traditional Chinese medicine, Paractin is the secret to defeating harmful proteins in your body, providing relief from discomfort in your back, joints, and much more. Call today to find out how you can get a free bottle of Paractin by Herbal Ultra. Which of my books fit you? Are you or a loved one suffering from mental dysfunctions, hormone problems, autoimmune diseases, or ear, nose, and throat problems? Good news is you'll get educated on all those health problems and you'll have the phase one, phase two diets, and whether or not you might consider prescriptive drugs and what they are, or natural approaches, all in the Fungus Link, volume two. been a day. Now we get to the meat of this whole thing. Well, actually, the restaurant was restaurant the meat of this was. whole thing. What are our favorite old books? Folks, when we write blogs or newsletters, we always go back to these old books. Every once in a while, Kyle just told me during the break, you find a gem. The Fungus Fighters. Don't try and find these books. They're probably not available anymore. I paid $6 at Half Price Books. The two women who invented Nystatin and why Nystatin was needed. There's a picture of them. In 1981, that book was written. I love it. And, you know, the very first time I ever saw you on tel television, I was thinking, what is this guy all about? You didn't have any of your books written yet, any right. of the Fungus Link series, but you kept referring to principles and practices of clinical mycology, C.C. Kibler and others, and this was a game changer for me because I went from being a skeptic to a believer with one book. Bunch of doctors, bunch of universities yeah. wrote in that book, and then this, Manual of Clinical Mycology, circa 1944. <laughs> in this book, it says fungal infections should be considered not rare at all. They're very, very common. 1944, before antibiotics? And the antibiotics it. fuel these things. You wow. know, after I read uh, Principles and Practices, the next one that you always quoted was the Fungal Bionics uh, series yeah. by Costantini. This one's prostate cancer, hope it la lasts, but there's bro uh, breast cancer, hope it lasts, also atherosclerosis. So I can like... get the words out. <laughs> and, uh, but Costantini and others. And this, again, just fed on what clinical mycology was all about, and it was an eye opener also. I can't wait for you to get to the last one because I know what that is. So uh, I'm going to do mine real quickly. 1957, right? It says the Handbook of Toxicology. What's in this book? The 300 antibiotics that had been developed by 1957. Mm. You ever study toxicology in college? You know what it is? Poison. We knew these antibiotics were poisonous, but in tiny doses they won't kill humans. They'll kill tiny uh, organisms in tiny doses. But I thought this was amazing, just <sighs> the title of that. I love that yeah. one. And this one for me was fun because once I began looking for these kinds of books, it's almost like a gold hunt. You're panning for something, and you go to a half-price books and you find something. This one I found several years ago. It's called Cancer As I See It. It's written by a medical doctor, Henry Abelman. And I just wanted to read this one little yeah. sentence. And talking about cancer, it says, but as to the real cause, the cause, as to the real cause, my findings suggest that mold or fungus is the primary cause of cancer. It's a tiny book, but it's rich with information. And Kyle, this only represents <clears throat> 10, 5%. <laughs> Well, you've seen my bookcase over there. I have books that expound on this, folks. Remember this. In my lifetime, not in your lifetime, but yeah. in my lifetime, the word mycotoxin has been shaped, hmm. right? Fungus make a poison. When they degrade, it's called a mycotoxin. And it was 1962. Uh, Kennedy was in the White House, mm -hmm. John Kennedy, that they uh, pulled this name out, mycotoxin, mold, poison. Uh, as they gave it to turkeys and they grew all these things all over their head, they looked like they had cancer and they were all dying. 
but the mold, the mycotoxin, was in the corn that they were feeding the so turkeys. So it's a fairly new <clears throat> term that's being used. Fungus has been around, we've known it, but mycotoxins, you were the first one to really start talking about that. Other, others had talked yeah. about candida, but really talking about mycotoxins and the range of fungi. But I love these foundational books that we've kind of built up on. And five of these six books don't mention the word mycotoxin. They yep. didn't know it in 1944. They didn't know it in 57 or 81. But they now know it, and we now know that it's causing a whole lot of problems, wrecking a whole lot of havoc on our health. Man, this has been a good I show. Know. This has been amazing. Don't go away. We'll wrap up today's Know the Cause in just a moment. A lot of people are still afraid of fat. And I know why that is. Back in the 1980s, there was a mantra that fat makes you fat. And we've since discovered that's really not the case at all. Throughout human history, good fats have been consumed, and all good fats do really, really good things. My three favorite good guy fats. Number one, avocado, a good monounsaturated fat. Number two is fish oil. You need these omega-3 fatty acids. And the third one for me is coconut oil. You need some saturates, in my opinion, some good saturated fats, helping to nourish the brain, helping to nourish the hormonal system. And the other thing about coconut oil is that coconut oil is antifungal. Try these three and feel better soon. Barb and Frank Long of Long Life Unlimited are distributors of one of the best home cleaning degreaser products in the country called Orange TKO with Delemony. Also, they feature many products in the Rafa Remedy line. Try this amazing product on your skin today. They also can serve you with 300 other products, many that are featured on Know the Cause. Ask for the Know the Cause special now by calling the number or logging on to longlifeunlimited.com. Remember, it's God given people approved, and doctor recommended. Well, thank you, old books. Good night, Moon. <laughs> Good night, Room. Uh, thank you, Restaurant, for having us in. Joe Willie's right here in Rockwall, Texas. Love it, every thank time. Thank you, Kyle, for doing that segment with me thank in you, the man. final segment of the old books. Thank you, Greg Emerson. Big time. That's the way to live out there. I'm a lot of people would love to live that way. He's living the dream, I think. He really is. Growing yeah. his own trees, you know, eating the fruit from them and so yep. forth. Uh, thank you, Susie. Who'd have thought, you know, histamine in food? No idea. So thank you for that information, Susie. And finally today, this was put up without my knowledge, right? The producer put this up and I thought, okay, I haven't seen this. According to these two researchers, approximately what percentage of antibiotic use for livestock can be administered without having a veterinarian, a doctor there? What did I guess? You guessed 33%. That and I was seemed thinking, about right. I was thinking 10%. Yep. But maybe they've let it go that far. Watch this, folks. Not all of it, but almost all 7 of it. 7% is... Wow. <laughs> yeah. Now, what does that mean, Kyle, that you can have up to 93%? That means that if I need, or I think I need, antibiotics for my cattle, generally speaking, I might be able to obtain that without a vet saying, here's the prescription for that. I can just do it independently. Fair to say, when we go out and we have a steak, somebody authorized 90% of that <laughs> food That's to true. be antibiotic. Uh, amazing. Thank you so hey, much. Hey, it's good to me. see you, man. Thank you, folks, for watching us. Go to our website, by the way, and learn a lot. Kyle and I blog using these old books. Sign up for our free newsletter, knowthecause.com. We'll see you next time. God bless you. Bye-bye.